Hello. If you're watching this video, you likely know me from the wildly successful video where I explain why these guitars are the best production guitars ever made. You may also know that I inadvertently drove up the used market so high that I can no longer purchase any more of these guitars myself. Smart idea. In this video, we're going to address all of the concerns I got on that video and talk about whether or not they should matter for you. And we're not going to waste any time, we're going to get started right now. But first I need to put these down because I can't just sit here and hold guitars while I talk to you. This is of course the Parker Nightfly guitar and this is my own heavily modded version, which I have a full review on, you can watch up here. But uh, we know the Nightfly as the less sexy version of the Parker Fly guitar. It's also a lot cheaper, so on and so forth. You know all the details by now and if you don't, you should watch that video first. I'm not telling you should rush out and buy one of these guitars. I wasn't even saying that in the original video. I'm just saying that these are really amazing guitars, that they are the best guitars ever produced in terms of mass production, and they were super ahead of their time. But anyway, let's get to all of the things that people claim are really bad about them, and let's see if they're actually worth considering before you purchase. Starting from the headstock, and you won't believe this, but people in the guitar community are so incredibly upset at the shape of this headstock because it just looks too weird for them. And to that I say, too bad, I guess. I mean, we know the importance of having a straight string pull from the bridge all the way to the headstock. And this guitar has a perfectly straight string pull. And as a result, well, for many reasons, but that's one of the reasons, uh, the tuning stability on these guitars are impeccable. Uh, I suppose one could wish for there to be more wood in this area to make it look like a more normal, traditional, standard guitar. But like I said in the original video, like I'll say right now, I actually think it looks pretty cool. And on top of that, having this wood gone gives you the ability to bend extra high right here. Okay, so in my opinion, the weird or quote-unquote ugly look of the headstock is actually a really awesome feature. If you've appreciated the amount of detail and analytical thinking I put into all of my guitar reviews, you will definitely like my guitar courses because I'm not really a gearhead, I'm actually just a guitar teacher who's very analytical. So check out all of those courses at andreflip.com slash courses. And if you don't want to purchase a course, I also have a free masterclass you can check out right below this video. Down to issue number two, and that has to do with the neck, of course. And one thing that people talked a lot about was the fact that these frets are glued on. And that is 100% true. These necks do have frets that are stainless steel and glued on directly to the carbon fiber uh, fingerboard. So here's the thing. I originally didn't think that the fact that the frets were glued on was a huge issue and that's because as you see I have many of these guitars I have bought many used I've sold more of these guitars than I actually have in this room right now so I've had and experienced a lot of these different guitars I have never ever dealt with one having a fret issue in terms of the frets falling out that has not been my experience however I'm not a madman I do understand by reading the reviews and doing other additional research after the video, that some people really have had severe issues with these frets. I don't know why your frets were so bad and why they fell out and why mine have been so good through so many different guitars, all of which being used, all of which being old. That being said, from the research I did, it seems like one can simply just glue the frets back in, provided they use the right glue, but again, I've never dealt with this issue, so I don't want to talk about it really much further, apart from acknowledging the fact that it does exist for some people. And of course, if you're having that issue, you should check out the Fly Clone Forum, and someone there will for sure be able to help you solve that fret issue. I also got comments about the fact that stainless steel frets sound really bad, and that nickel frets sound better, and everyone who plays stainless steel frets, after you play them for long enough, you'll realize that nickel frets sound better. I mean, I played nickel frets for over 10 years, 
uh, maybe 12 years I played exclusively nickel frets because that's all I could afford. And then I switched over to stainless steel frets and I've been playing them now for six years or so. And I even recently purchased a different guitar that has nickel frets and I go back between the two and I don't personally hear a difference. I just feel a difference when it comes to how silky things like bends are. I have never felt that stainless steel frets are making a big difference with the way that things sound. I only know that they play a lot easier. I don't have to worry about them wearing out. And yeah, that to me, that's just an awesome thing since once it's set up, it's essentially set up for life as long as the glue uh, holds, right? If you've missed me talking about Parker guitars and you want me to talk more about them, or for example, if you want to see a review on this, very, very rare Parker Southern Knife Lie. Give this video a like and we'll make that happen. And comment what the type of Parker topic you'd like to hear next. We'll make that happen too. Moving down to the rest of the body, we have a lot of quote unquote issues here. The first issue that is definitely a real issue is the fact that these guitars have this horn. Okay. And this horn can be sharp depending on how you sit with the guitar. And so here's the thing. I personally have never felt that this horn is an issue and it never pokes me when I'm playing guitar, no matter how I sit with the guitar. This never pokes me in my chest as I'm playing. That's just me. The Parker Fly guitar, however, does poke me in the chest when I play which is one of the reasons why I don't play Parker Fly guitars and why I do play Parker Nightfly guitars. So here's the thing, if the, if the horn is an issue for you and it stabs you, that's unfortunate. I guess you shouldn't play these guitars. Um, but for me, it's not an issue, so what else can I really say about that? Now, the next quote unquote issue also has to do with the horn. And this is perhaps the biggest critique I've seen about these guitars, and that is that they are ugly. They're so darn ugly. I've got dozens, if not hundreds of comments of people saying that these guitars are so ugly that they won't play them even though the features are quote unquote amazing. And so it seems like a large part of the guitar community is so enthralled by looks that they're willing to pass up a guitar that plays amazing, that has features they actually like, they're willing to pass that up because of the looks of the guitar. Now, if you are someone who really cares about the looks of a guitar that much, and this looks ugly to you for some reason, then don't buy it. I will say that, of course, looks are subjective, but if we really want to be analytical about this, it's pretty obvious that you think this guitar looks ugly, because it's shaped similar to a guitar you're used to seeing, but slightly askew from that guitar. In other words, it isn't your special artistic eye that has figured out that this guitar is ugly. It's the fact that you've seen many guitars that look like it, but slightly different. And this difference makes you upset because it does not look like what you're used to. Just think about that for a second. Uh, realize that if the first electric guitar, if one of the first electric guitars were shaped like this, then this would not look ugly to you. A different shape would look ugly to you. Okay, rant about attraction, done. In fact, it seems like that Parker in their later years, the company, once Ken Parker left, um, were they were very clearly aware of the fact that people found this horn ugly or pointy and that they found the headstock ugly or pointy or whatever because in the later models, you can see that they made a big effort to try to make this more traditional looking and to make the body itself more traditional looking. And so I have I don't have any experiences with any of the, the newer Parker model guitars. The models that came after Ken Parker left the company, I don't have a lot of familiarity with them. But from what I've seen in my comments, people seem to like them. So hey, if you need a Parker, but you want it to have a more um, smooth, angle here and a more traditional headstock here, then maybe you should check out one of the later Parker guitars and maybe you'll like that instead. But I can't vouch for them. Okay, now let's get to some actual real concerns 
that I talked about myself in the original video. So depending on which guitar you get, the bridge may have uh, balls in the saddle. All right, there are balls there. Or if you have a different model, it may have saddles that are just uh, straight, flat steel. Now, I'm not sure why they switch from the ball saddles to the plain steel saddles. But what I do know is that if you ever get a ball loose, okay, if you ever lose one of these balls, if you ever try to repair them, it can be a big pain. And that is an issue in my opinion, okay? So you have to make sure that you take care of these bridges and that you don't ever lose any of the parts because if you do, repairs can be very difficult. And since these parts are no longer made, they can be, in some cases, impossible to repair. And so while we're talking about the bridge and the balls, we should also talk about the fact that none of these parts are made, okay? And that to me is an obvious issue with buying a Parker guitar, right? If you want a replacement neck for whatever the reason, you will not be able to buy one. Um, and even if you did have a different neck that you wanted to use on this guitar, you couldn't because all of the neck joints are cut in a sphere and they kind of mold perfectly to just this neck. So you need a Parker neck to go on a Parker body. You need a Parker body if you have a spare Parker neck. And so it will be very, very difficult to replace anything on this guitar from the neck to the body to the bridge. The only thing that's easily replaceable is the tuners, of course, the nut, and the pickups and all of the pickguard related things. So that is something you should be aware of, of course. If you have a Parker bridge, again, be very, very nice to it, treat it very well. I'm not saying baby it, it's of course a tool like any other guitar, but be mindful of how you take care of these parts and make sure you don't lose anything, obviously. That being said, all of these Parkers are all very old and in my experience, the bridge holds up amazingly well. And even this bridge, that has several issues. It's actually broken. Uh, the trem arm thing or bobber is broken, I'm missing a piece. And it still works amazingly well and it still has no issues. So you don't have to baby these guitars, but you do have to be mindful of the fact that if you lose the parts, that's going to be a big issue for you. Okay, moving on. Another complaint that I got about the Parker guitars is the fact that they sound weird, right? They sound like a fake guitar. They sound plasticky. They don't have a tone that's like a real guitar. I'm not really sure where this idea comes from with these guitars. But in my experience, like I said, I've had many different ones with many different pickup configurations, with different pickups from different companies. And in my experience, every time I put new pickups in these guitars, they sound totally different for the most part. And so I would really challenge anyone who thinks that the reason they sound the way that they do is because of the neck or the fretboard or the body. I would challenge you to a blind test. I can almost guarantee you that if I were to play this guitar and a different guitar back to back with the same pickups, and I put it in a mix or if I put it in even a solo guitar context, I highly, highly doubt you would be able to hear the difference. Of course, most people would agree with me in that regard. And we're more talking about how it sounds when we actually play it alone in our room in our practice sessions. And all I can say about that is that I like the way it sounds. I've never had any issues with the way it sounds. And if I ever do need to change the way it sounds, all it takes is a pickup swap and it can sound like anything I want it to sound like. And, you know, maybe it's me. Maybe I just like the weird quirk of how it sounds. Or maybe it's the fact that I don't believe it exists and therefore I don't notice it. I'll just say this. Whatever your favorite pickups are, get them. Put them in your Parker Knife Fly. And I think you will really enjoy it. And as far as I can tell, that is all of the major issues that people have said about these guitars. I'll repeat them one more time. They don't like the way the headstock looks. They don't like the way that the body looks. They don't like the fact that the horn can actually poke you. The frets apparently fall out for some people. 
the parts are difficult to get. For example, the bridge parts in particular are very difficult and um, that makes repairs very difficult or extremely costly. And people also claim that they sound weird because of how they're made or because of, honestly, I don't really know. And I've addressed all those issues for you now. Uh, so as long as you don't have any fret issues, and as long as you don't believe that the sound of the guitar is coming from the magic of the carbon fiber fretboard or the stainless steel frets, I think you will really enjoy these guitars. That's all for today. By the way, I'm Andre Flood, and I'll talk to you soon.